Okay, well here's the job for today. I have this PC which I recently put together from spare parts that I showed in a previous video not too long ago. And I have this other PC over here which is a refurbished HP unit that I had upgraded well, probably about 18 months ago now. And it really is not a very good performer and you really can't expand it because it's, it was meant to be you know, a PC that you didn't do much with once you purchased it and started using it. Well, this is a big step up from it. It has a faster i7 in it. I think this is going to be fourth gen, and this one here is third gen. So what I'm going to do is make it so that this one becomes this one in terms of disk space and all of the application software and everything else that's installed on here. Now, there are actually three different ways that you can take a replacement PC. It could be a brand new one or one like this one, which is, you know, not bad, but it's a refurbished type PC, but put into a modern case, modern power supply. But to get a PC like this to basically do the job plus the extra performance that this will perform, you have to do something to get all of that information over from this older or existing PC over to the replacement. The first way I'm going to try, I hope works. I think it will, but you never know. And what I'm going to do is pull the hard drive, in this case an SSD, 512 gigabyte SSD that's currently in this PC and I'm going to just put it onto this PC and make sure that uh, everything works fine. That'll save me a lot of time in terms of installing software, installing licenses uh, and everything else that you would have to do in that case, creating accounts, the whole thing, you know. Now if that doesn't work then there are two other ways that we can accomplish this. One I've already hinted at but there's another one as well. So let's try this first and whether this works or not at the end of this video or in the second and third parts of this video I'm going to go ahead and talk about and maybe describe in more detail the other two methods but for now let's get started with this and let's pull that SSD drive out of here and get it into this one and see if it works okay let's get the cover off this one's pretty simple I don't have a lock on the back which could go here and keep it from being opened easily we just have to pull this up and right in here is the actual SSD that I want to pull out. So right over here is what I want to get out of here. Now this pulls up the actual power supply and there's the drive. And I'm going to pull this out of the way too just to get out of the way. This is the CD DVD reader. And then I have full access to the drive now. So what I will do is this is on a tray. So all I have to do now is pull up this tray. And if I push down here I can actually pull over to the side and then pull straight up and there it is. So I just have to disconnect the SATA data cable, disconnect the SATA power cable, and now I can take this and put it on the side and get it out of this holder so I can put it into the other PC. Now, in addition to the drive, I also have to pull out the video card. The other PC does not have a video card. It's using the motherboard video. This is a Gigabyte GTX 1030, which is not bad. Not a super powerful video card. It only has two gig of video RAM on it but it's much better than what's in the other one. So I'm going to pull that out as well so we can retain the graphics. All you have to do is pop this one panel up here and then the card itself should just come right out. So I got to push the connector in the back. That would help. There we go. So here's a video card that was in there. A gigabyte GTX 1030, two gigabyte. So that's out too now. I'll pack this guy back up again. And it'll still be usable like this. I may turn it into a Linux box, totally running Linux by itself and nothing else. Now this uh, solid state drive, it's held in by four screws at the bottom. Now I could use those special star screwdrivers or it'll take a flat blade too. So to save myself time, I'll just... And there you go. It has now been removed and I can put this directly into the other PC. Now since both drives are installed right here in the front of the case, here's the SSD I'll be swapping out and the hard drive I won't be touching. All I have to do is take off the one side. And then this is the drive that I want to swap out right here. Okay, so let me just remove the SATA data and the SATA power cables from the drive. There's four screws holding it. I will hold it from the bottom as I remove these four screws. And this one is a little bit smaller. This is only 480 gig, whereas the replacement one, the one I pulled from the other one, is a 512 gig. So I'll be picking up or retaining that extra space by doing this as well. So let's get this guy in. It's got to go this way. 
Now I tighten them a little bit more because I didn't pipe them all the way down the first time. And now I just have to connect these cables. Power cable in first. Always get the little L thing correct, right? And I'll put the data cable next. Now before I can put the video card into that PC that I took out of the, the previous one, I have to change this bracket. It's in a low profile bracket. I gotta put the regular bracket on top. This particular card came with both. Now we're done. Okay, I have to remove this little bracket here that's at the back that this case has blocking the external screws holding down the I.O. devices. And then there's one I.O. shield here I gotta take off. Happens to have a screw. And the video card will go in this way. Push it down into place. Feel like it locked. Put this screw back. Put it down so it's nice and steady in place. And I'll put this little bracket back. There it is. Now let me put the cover back on with the window. Get that in place. Let me connect the power, HDMI, the mouse, the keyboard, and the network. All connected up. Okay, it's all hooked up. The monitor, let me just make sure it's on. Yep, it's in the right place. And let me turn this on. And then we'll hit the power button and see what happens here. I see Asus up on the screen. That's a good sign. I see Windows loading. Move this out of the way a little bit. Sometimes it takes a few extra minutes to load when it's uh, got to resize the hardware because the hardware has changed now. And in all likelihood, I'll have to uh, reinstall the Windows licensing key for this PC in order to get it to work. So I'll probably get an error. So right now it's getting devices ready 14%. We're back in, and that's the same login screen we had before. And we're up. Let's see if the network works. Let's try YouTube. And there it is. We have liftoff. There's no sound on this particular monitor, so it's not going to play. But at this point, I'm going to run some tests. I ran some tests on the previous PC, regular performance type tests, nothing severe, no gaming tests, because this is, you, know, you can play some lightweight games, but it's not meant to be a gaming PC. It's meant to be an Office Automation Plus PC. So we'll go ahead and run those tests and I'll show the comparison. Matter of fact, let me start right off and see if I can run Heaven, because I was able to run that before. There we go. Heaven is benchmarking right now. So at that point, I consider this one done. Hang on for the montage at the end. But I do want to talk about the other two ways I could have done this. I could have actually done a full copy of the disk over to the other PC. Now I would have lost some disk space. It would have gone from the 512 to 480 gigabyte in the particular case I had here. I could have also just, you know, with this thing preloaded with Windows and other general office automation applications that I installed, I could have just had the other applications that my daughter uses installed on this one. It would have taken me a lot longer though, really, because some of them have licenses and we're not 100% sure where those license uh, IDs are. We'd have to search them out, I think. But put comments down below and let me know what you think about this. Thank you.